Shalene, first of all, we want to thank you for uh, for interviewing with us today. Just let, let us know who you are and okay. what you're doing. Okay. Hi, I'm Shalene Nightingale, and I'm running for governor in the state of California under the AIP, affiliated to the Constitution Party. We are grassroots. Uh, the media, as you know, which is controlled, is not going to put a third party, especially a constitutional candidate, on the news. So what we need is a grassroots effort. And I'm doing it because we, the people, have to step up. We have to start being bold. We cannot allow the elite to continue to control our government. And it, it's actually what the Founding Fathers wanted us to do. They wanted we, the people, to run our government, not elitists and, and corporations and unions to run it. King George, as well as our Founding Fathers, could you uh, tell us what that means to you and most Americans? Every student should be required to read the Constitution of the United States of America, the Bill of Rights, without it being dictated on what it means or doesn't mean by anybody else. Obama declared, we are going to change the Constitution. They don't hide behind what they're doing. Unfortunately, when you have a society where they're trying to indoctrinate us in the public school system, take over our media, they blind you over this fact. The Founding Fathers, though, they have great wisdom. I mean, they were for limited government. They were for, they were for against everything that we've become now. So it's very important that people find out what they believed in, because it gives us great wisdom on how we can get back to what they fought and how they fought tyranny and overcame it. And Christians, it's our responsibility to go out and look for true teachers, not false teachers. And, you know, really, that was what the Founding Fathers wanted. They didn't want government to take over religion. That's why they escaped King George. When a silent majority allows their nation to lose its common sense, that nation is lost, and you are allowing them to take your country away from you. Is it common sense to adore at the altar of multiculturalism? Read your world history. Not one nation has survived as a multiculture. It's the uniculture that is your strength. One country, one culture, one language. Is it common sense that 84% of the people want to make English the official language of America, but your majority political party espouses insanity, ignores the people, and says no? 
Is it common sense that 53 countries, mostly in Africa, have declared English to be their national language, and the party who declares we will unite you says press two for Spanish? Is it common sense to adopt your new national religion of diversity when the very word means disunity? We founded a country on similarities, not diversities. One country, one culture, one language. You cry out for unity, but is it common sense to continue to identify yourselves by your ethnicities and not your nationalism? White hyphen America, black hyphen America, Chinese hyphen America, Hispanic hyphen American, gay and lesbian hyphen American, the black caucus, the Hispanic caucus, the woman's caucus. You want unity? Change your language. Isn't it time once again we all became just plain Americans? Or is that too much common sense? Is it your new common sense now to stand up and cheer when a presidential candidate wants to hand over the health care system to that same government who has run Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and 12 other entitlement programs into bankruptcy? A government bureaucracy who can't run a railroad, your airports, secure your borders, or find 15 to 20 million illegal aliens? That same government that allows Islamic women to take their driver's license picture wearing a neck scarf covering their face because it offends their belief. What's next? Allowing the Ku Klux Klan wearing their hoods? Is it common sense to bankrupt the American treasury? Fighting wars for countries whose silent majority won't fight for themselves? Your debt is now $9.4 trillion. Is it common sense to continue to give away $9 billion of taxpayer money to unfriendly countries in foreign aid, including $2 billion a year to Egypt, who votes against the United States 80% of the time in the United Nations? All this while your own inner cities crumble. Forty percent of your high school graduates can only read or write at a fourth grade level. You have to import people from China and India for your high-tech industry because you haven't got enough smart people in America. And New Orleans and the flood victims of Iowa continue to be forgotten. This is madness. Lay down your misplaced global burden and rebuild America first. You can't support the world while neglecting your own country. Are you unifying the country with common sense when both of your presidential candidates cry out, we must show compassion for the 15 to 20 million invaders from south of your border? But not one word of compassion for the overburdened American taxpayer who is forced to subsidize the invaders by paying over $250 billion of their hard-earned money to establish America as the welfare department of a failed, corrupt foreign country. Are you unifying your country with common sense by sending out your utility bills and your social security checks in Spanish? Legal and illegal immigrants have no incentive to learn your unifying language because you make it easy for them not to assimilate. How many of you write in big letters across that bill, English only please, and send it back? Stop bending over backwards to accommodate every other culture but your own. Is it common sense to allow your activist judges to ignore your history, your culture, your declaration of independence, and every other founding document to remove God from public life? And endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, their creator, not the ACLU, not the will of the atheists, or the anti-Americans that sit on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco. Separation of church and state, yes. Separation of God from public life, never intended by your founding fathers. Is it common sense that the very political party who claims to be the party of the people and shouts, we will bring change, consistently stops all common sense legislation to secure your borders, establish workplace verification, and stop taxpayer money for illegals? They call themselves progressive global thinkers. We had another word for them in 1776. We called them traitors. This happened all once before. 232 years ago, it led to revolution and thousands of dead in the streets. It will happen again unless you take back America now. Join the grassroots movement of the second American Revolution. Not of guns and violence, but pressure, pressure, pressure on your non-representing representatives who created these problems in the first place. This is the most important phone number in your democracy, the congressional switchboard. Pick up your phone every day, every hour if need be, and call your representatives and tell them in no uncertain language to listen to the silent majority or else be thrown out on their hindquarters. It's toll free and your taxes pay for it. Would you stand by and watch your family perish when you have the power to save them? Of course not. Then why are you doing that to your own country? 
one 9281 Perhaps you allow all this destructive, uncommon sense out of a distorted notion of tolerance. Remember what Aristotle said, tolerance is the last virtue of a dying society. You are tolerating the behavior that is destroying you. This wine was once rich, highly desired, and admired. But when you dilute it with enough water, it stops being anything. Take back America now. Choose to be part of the second American revolution. Pressure, pressure, pressure. No presidential candidate, no political party can save you now. Only an aroused citizenry will turn this uncommon sense around. And he or she who does nothing now is helping them to destroy America. My name is Thomas Paine, and I approve of this message. I only hope to God you will too.